What's up YouTube? I finally have my generator working and I wanted to show you how it all works. I've been building this thing for about a year. Finally, it's at a stage where I can switch it on, it powers up. It provides about 2000 watts of power itself and it's charging the batteries. 400 amp hours at 12 volts, um, which is quite a lot of power. Here it is. It's a big black box which contains all the heat and most of the noise. If I show you inside, we have four 100 amp hour 12 volt lead acid batteries. And then in the middle here we have an exhaust system, which is uh, two gas cylinders which have been joined, which have been joined at the back allowing the, uh, the exhaust pulses, exhaust gas to um, exit the engine and uh, go into the big cylinder here, expand, be restricted again by the, uh, the small pipe there and then go into another expansion, expansion volume, sorry, and then uh, you can see the welds there. I've inserted a couple of plates which uh, essentially act as a sort of a resonator system like you'd have in a car. Um, and then uh, you have the exhaust which comes out into a 3D printed elbow, uh, which is ABS, so it's um, fairly temperature resistant, and uh, then out this polyurethane, polyurethane pipe, I think. Here's the motor itself, it's a 6.5 horsepower uh, Honda clone. I have a video, unboxing video on my channel of this motor. This motor is mounted on a plate, which is mounted on little rubber feet. Uh, four feet there, one in each corner. We have a, 22 SI alternator here. The belt setup is actually a synchronous cam belt system. So we've got actually got two camshaft pulleys from uh, a GM uh, Vauxhall engine. 20 NE, C20 NE, 20 SEH, C20 XE. Uh, I think they all have similar or maybe even the same pulleys. Uh, these pulleys are basically kind of turned down uh, with the center shaft kind of welded to them. Then they've been uh, slid over the um, the upper shafts of the mo uh, of the motor and the alternator and uh, there's a key in place holding it all together. There's a couple of uh, idlers that I turned down. They're actually on proper sort of decent bearings and a tension rod, uh, tension turnbuckle here so I can adjust the belt tension. And of course the beauty of this is it never slips. So there's not a lot of energy wastage even though the belt is quite loose. It never slips which is great. Then, as I said, it's a 22 SI alternator, 145 amps, I believe, which is actually perfectly matched the engine. It can actually stall the engine with its current governing, with its kind of standard governing system. So it's, it's a perfect match. I'm building an EFI system for this at the moment, which will hopefully respond better to the load demand. At the moment, if you power up uh, a China World, for example, at kind of the higher end, the higher power requirement, it does um, does stall the engine. The rev lever isn't very tight, so it kind of slips back down. It basically needs to be on full full power, uh, full revs. Carrying on, we've got the output of the alternator is going to the batteries here. They're all in parallel, and then also in parallel to the batteries is the uh, the inverter. Uh, this thing here is a, a regulator. What I've got in this alternator, I, by, I, I gutted the internal regulator and took the field, took the brush connection straight out of the case into these cables here. And so this regulator is actually uh, varying the power of the field winding to control the rate of charge, so to control the load. It's very good. It's a little bit expensive and I, I didn't need it. You don't really need it. Uh, you just need the internal regulator would work fine. I bought this because it was, I was kind of troubleshooting the alternator. Um, I wasn't getting, I was getting full 18 or 19 volts out of it, which is boiling batteries and I really couldn't find the problem. And it turns out it was just one of the field winding wires was snagging to the chassis of the alternator, giving it full power. It's just a, just a mistake from the people who rebuilt it. I bought it rebuilt off eBay. Uh, standard, classic eBay <laughs> jokery. And then we have, um, this is a PWM speed controller, 12 volt speed controller for this fan here. So 
the way the um, I designed this this enclosure is that it sucks cold air from the bottom of the box. The cold air goes over the engine, so it's sort of fed over the engine. The air then cools these big cylinders, which are kind of containing the exhaust heat, and the heat gets vented out through this kind of mesh, this gauze here. So not only does it provide electricity, not only provides power, it also provides heat for the workshop. Not a lot of heat, um, but I can vary the speed of this fan. And I will show you right now, it's just the switch here. I don't know if you can hear that. It's quite powerful. Um, it's one of these universal racing fans. I've got off eBay. Um, it works better on here than on my than on the race car. So uh, let's power it up and see it running. Uh, do -do -do, fuel on, choke on. I have my fuel system here with a little filter, which is it just draws fuel from the uh, marine tank here. It's not very good. It does actually start sucking air. It doesn't. There's no fuel pump here, so it's kind of. It's kind of gravity, but there's a few air leaks in there, so it's not very good at the moment. I need to. I'm, I'm basically going to EFI this, so it's going to have a proper pump and everything. But for now, it's it's working great. So let's start this up. Charge controller now goes through a, uh, a sort of a calibration phase, calibration cycle, and then it will start loading the uh, the alternator in a second. You'll hear it. It's flashing to say it's uh, sort of priming. It's sort of a timer, and when it goes solid, it then goes into a high high charge rate. So you can hear it dropping now. So it's starting to charge now, um, you hear the pitch of the engine change as it's getting loaded and uh, here we go, the timer is activated. So the charge controller actually is designed for uh, marine applications, is it somehow estimates the battery capacity and uh, the current voltage level uh, and then it uh, it's essentially just a, 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 a smart version of the standard alternator voltage regulator. So it's charging now. Uh, I don't have any gauges on it at the moment, um, but uh, we can see the current power draw. 18 watts of uh, light bulbs at the moment. And we can hear the generator is um, is working. You can hear the exhaust note here. It's quite um, it's quite a nice low sort of burble. <coughs> and uh, not too much noise um, for the effort that I went through building this enclosure. I would have hoped it would have been a bit quieter. Um, but I think this is pretty much the best that, uh, that I'll be able to get out of it. I have a, a heater here, which is, I think, a 2000 watt. It's got two power levels. 2000 watts on the high power setting, I believe. So let's plug this in and see how it copes. So it's on fan mode now and you just heard the generator pick up. This is on the first level. So you can hear the load has increased. Yeah, unfortunately it's not. 
not uh, sustaining the high RPM because of the linkage being quite loose. So this is... I imagine if I put this on 2000 watts it will probably cut out. No, it's still going. This is now a 2000 watt draw. And the engine is really bogging down now. It's still going. But very low RPM. Right, let's try and cut something. So the cool, the really cool thing about this power jack inverter is actually it's uh, peak power handling. In the uh, Chinglish description on eBay, it does actually say, makes a lot of claims about being able to sustain momentary power draws, sort of really high power draws. And um, actually it's, it's, uh, it's not a complete lie. This here is a 2000, I think it's more than 2000 watts actually. Uh, it's a chop saw Challenge Extreme. It's a sort of a no name chop saw from, uh, from eBay, I believe. What is it saying? Okay, 2000 watts. Uh, and this thing shreds. The inrush current is huge on this thing. Let me get some uh, shorter scraps. Yeah, I built some shelves with this thing recently. Uh, let's see how the generator copes with the inrush current of this beast. Ready? Can you hear it? Three, two, one. Ah, not plugged in. Ah, oh, by the bummer. Where are we? Where's the cable? Right, let her rip. just like a hot knife through butter so um, yeah this thing is actually sweet it even does power consumption calculations so I've consumed from this inverter I've consumed 1.5 kilowatt hours and I think the fuel level is about here so actually it's only used about uh, probably about five liters of fuel for the, uh, the 1.5 kilowatt hours, which I don't know if that's great or not so great. I can't work it out in my head. But um, I also have this small inverter plugged in here, which when I'm not using power tools, I uh, power things off here. It has a slightly lower standby current draw. Um, See the lights are still still shining brightly. Let me just show you the um, the connections at the back. So I've got two. I think they're five millimeter cross section cables. So they're serious serious cables. I think they're advertised to be about a thousand amps or thereabouts so yeah if you're interested at all in uh, seeing more of the build of this generator uh, leave a comment and um, I have a ton of material from building it so if uh, you guys really want to see it uh, or get some get some plans uh, get some ideas on how to make one yourself hit me up in the comments and um, I'll edit something up so anyway thanks for watching